Do we have Commissioner Wagner on the phone? Yes. Yes. All righty. This is Agenda 10 14 by the Public Utilities Commission of Nevada. Present in Carson City. Dave Noble. And on the phone? Rebecca Wagner. And I'm Lee Birch on Las Vegas. Item 1A is time for comments from the general public on topics that pertain to items on this agenda. Are there any members of the public that wish to make a statement in Carson City? I have one chairman, uh, Mr. Fred Bolts. Good morning, for the record, Fred Bolts. Uh, PUCN's regulatory operations staff and NBE's responses to this complaint, which is uh, number 140427 docket, demonstrate a recurring inability to answer questions, complete objective analyses, perform risk management, conduct strategic planning, and design systems that take into account all factors and circumstances. Probable cause exists to initiate a formal PUCN hearing process as to how NBE has proceeded on this subject and remedy the many problems. There is no clearly delineated layout of standalone outage reporting system costs as suggested in docket 10.02.009. <clears throat> Excuse me, how could the commission adequately review something that has not been specifically disclosed to it? Reviewing multi-million dollar initiatives before they are implemented minimizes waste and costly fixes. No public input to this system design was even secured. When there is no electricity, there is no widespread access to computers or phones. Even landline phones may fail if power interruption and natural disaster is serious enough, such as a smart grid hacker attack. People with health issues requiring electrically powered medical devices need to know how long the power will be out to make alternative plans. How is that lack of knowledge going to serve the public interest during a lengthy Las Vegas summer outage? During a widespread outage, NBE's Green Cross program cannot quickly restore power to those with electricity-dependent health care equipment. Regulatory operations staff and NBE's planning and impl implementation for this new system totally ignores the limitations and customer needs of ill, poor, and elderly Nevadans who don't have access to high-tech, high-cost devices they irrationally presume everyone owns. That a company of the size of NBE feigns an inability to instantly notify all media but especially radio stations of power outages suggest indifference and poor management. Why wouldn't radio stations immediately broadcast and update power outage information as a public service and to attract future NBE advertising dollars? Most people do and can access battery powered or vehicle radios. NBE has blown past its promised April 1st, 2014 rollout of the new outage reporting system. There have been no bill inserts and no billing messages as promised. The bad implementation is reminiscent of the recent botched meter replacement rollout. Offering excuses instead of solutions for automatically enrolling its customers in the new system again demonstrates poor operations planning and systems engineering at NVE. One obvious solution, NVE My Account customers could have received emails informing them of choices and asking them for a selection, saving postage and time. Nothing has been done along these lines. Had staff carefully read the original complaint, they would have discovered that this NVE customer was harmed by two extended power outages on two consecutive days last summer. All of the problems cited above concerning lack of NVE information occurred. For each of the reasons, deficiencies, and unanswered questions listed above, probable cause exists to hold formal PUCN hearings on this complaint. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anyone else, Mr. Commissioner Noble? No, that's all I have. Okay. And I have one card, card, Mr. Fazio. Mr. Bolt's docket, you are acting in the best interest of the public. 
what, do you think that TV news is going to give added reports to those without power? Just what do you propose is the most efficient way to notify the public? You approved the Ring Cross program to turn on first to those on the list. That's great. But what about people on medical equipment that need to know if they have to get to an ER to maintain equipment usage? Ever think about that? Most people are battery-operated radios. How time-consuming would it be for NVE to have to send a mass email out to the radio stations to inform the public? NVE has a live person for calling. So if you do the email so that everyone has an opportunity to become informed, the blinders need to come off and look at the room full of the pink neon elephants to quote the PUC. It's in the public interest. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fazio. Anyone else in the space? Okay, let's go to item 2 a uh, Commissioner Wagner? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, item uh, 2A is docket number 12-02016, and this is an investigation and rulemaking to amend the Administrative Code 703.280 through 703.296 to avoid duplication of regulations governing interconnection agreements for telecommunication services as found in Section 252 of the U.S. Code. And what you have before you today is a order and report. Um, as you recall, this um, docket was opened as a result of our investigation to see if we could streamline uh, our regulations as uh, required by an executive order. Um, after um, reviewing the comments filed in, in this docket, we did have a proposed regulation, but what we found was there was a possibility of too many unintended consequences and that our existing regulations um, provide a, a, a good uh, guidepost or uh, guidelines for those having to, to um, apply before the commission. So with that, I am happy to answer any questions. Any questions or comments? I have none. Do you have a motion? I do. I move that we approve the report as filed, issue the um, the order that's associated with the report, and authorize the Commission Secretary to, or Assistant Commission Secretary to um, close the docket. Second. Concur. Item 2A, you'd like to use by Commissioner Noble. Item 2B is docket number 13-04037. That's the application of Southwest Gas Corporation to further evaluate the class cost of service study and related issues pursuant to the order issued in docket numbers 12-02019 and 12-04005. You have before you a draft report and draft order recommending that no changes be made to the class cost of service study. I'm happy to uh, respond to any questions or comments you might have. Any questions or comments? I have none. You know, the only comment I have is um, I'm not sure that I'm so convinced uh, but I would like to see it in the context of a rate case so I can actually see, so I could actually kind of evaluate this just a little bit. Um, I don't have the intention of opposing the order or dissenting on it, but I do think that, I, I don't think we should consider it closed. I do think that this is an issue that's going to pop up again and probably the best way to see it and to kind of, and investigate it is probably in the context of a rate case. So that's all I have to say. Do you have a uh, motion to your level? I would move that we approve the report as filed and issued the appropriate order. Second. <clears throat> Second. Okay, first. Item 2C is brought to us pursuant to Section 252 of the Telecommunications Act of 1996. It can be voted upon without any further discussion unless any commissioner has questions or comments. No, thank you. I'm not. Okay, I would then move that we grant the joint petition, approve the amendment and agreement, and issue the order. Second. Concur. Item 3A is brought to us by General Counsel and can be voted on without further discussion unless the Commission wants to pull the item out for further consideration. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Then I would move that the Commission accept the recommendation to contain the General Counsel's briefing memo regarding item 3A and issue the appropriate order. Second. Concur. 
Regulatory Operations Tax Items 4A, 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D, 5E, and 5F, brought to us by Regulatory Operations Staff and can be voted on without further comment, unless any commission wants to pull one out for further consideration. So thank you. I have none. The only comment that I have is with regard to 4A, and I actually think that this may be an issue that we can take up in my existing investigation docket for customer service. Um, I'll be taking a look at it to see if I can, um, this might be actually be an interesting uh, issue to address for some of the metrics that the company's taking a look at. So I'll probably be trying to take a look at it from that angle. If it looks like I have to bring it back to you guys, I will, but um, I do think that I can pull that into my customer service investigation. It's probably a good a topic for a discussion there. So um, just kind of heads up that that's what I might do with that. Um, I would then move. The Commission accept the recommendations contained in staff's briefing memos regarding the items 4A, 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D, 5E, and 5F, and issue these four orders. Second. Concur. Item 6A is time for comments from the general public on any topic that is jurisdictional to the Commission. Are there any members of the public wish to make a statement in Carson City? I have one, Chairman. Mr. Fred Bolt. Record Fred Volz. For a ratepayer funded public agency to appropriately serve the public interest, it needs to take every reasonable opportunity to secure public input on issues before acting. Unfortunately, the public has experienced an increasingly antagonistic attitude in the policies, procedures, and actions of PUCN officials and staff. There is no public policy justification for PUCN staff to hold on to staff briefing memos concerning open consumer complaints received over two weeks earlier and release them to parties just three days before a commission meeting. It leaves inadequate time to submit a written response. This situation has happened not once but twice in the last weeks to this speaker. Allowing only three minutes to orally refute staff <coughs> reports during the agenda item is inadequate for the task. For commissioners to leave public meetings early because they are bored or state they don't have the time for this exposes an unacceptably dismissive attitude by public servants pay professional level salaries. Similarly, the Commission's General Counsel has no authority to declare administrative commission meetings over when she is not the presiding officer simply because she is unable to civilly engage with the public. There is also no public policy rationale for requiring the submission of a request to comment form before public input can be received on any docket. Whoever wants to make comments to the Commission about business before it should be free to do so prior to and during any of its meetings. The state's open meeting law allows a more expansive public comment period after discussion by commissioners and before voting on each and every agenda action item. It would behoove this commission to adopt that option if it has any interest in improving its poor track record in genuinely serving the public interest and hearing what the public expects from the commission. It would be a more efficient and effective use of everyone's time if one consumer session was held with video conferencing connections between Las Vegas and Reno Sparks rather than holding two separate sessions, neither of which will be video conference to the other part of the state. Truckee Meadows Community College offers such services in Washoe County. What happens in the north affects the south and vice versa, as we have seen with the long delayed cost plague one Nevada transmission line, the unnecessary new surveillance meters, the endless renewable energy subsidies, and the expensive for ratepayers takeover by Mid-American of NBE. For a presiding commissioner to deny the opportunity for all concerned to hear what interested parties have to say statewide about policy issues is a violation of his oath of office to serve the public interest. I would stipulate that none of this submission be redacted, nor my prior comments. Uh, they should be readily available to any interested parties if commission transparency is a core value. I finally request that these comments be included as an exhibit to the meeting's minutes per NRS provision. Thank you. Anyone in Las Vegas? Mr. President? During the um, last administrative hearing, Commissioner Burton and Sean Cammy graciously explained that your department's funding comes from a percentage of revenue via tax from utility bills. Thus, that makes the PUC our employees. As your boss, 
we expect you to actually work, not spend time on Facebook or every single morning log on to websites to see if anything new has been posted. Logging on from an Apple or an iPad from Reno after hours is not problematic. We have a highly detailed record of every minute and page that has been visited during working hours. Commissioner Noble, do you think this new little ploy about trying to suppress public input regarding the rape case and AMI reimbursement that you were presiding over regarding video conferencing, let me educate you. That's not going to fly. As you will discover very, very shortly, you will be answering for this retaliate, retaliatory tactic that you think you can get away with. As there are over a dozen people naming you and two others directly for it. Consider this your on the record notification. Apparently, lessons weren't fully absorbed during the smart meter issue, yet we do not acquiesce when our rights are being infringed upon. Your mendation actions are almost like Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. What does this mean? That means for every force, there is a reaction force that is equal in size but opposite opposite in direction. That is to say, whenever an object pushes another object, it gets pushed back in the opposite direction equally hard. The problem is, only I will exert a greater force over the opposing force. Also, the exhibits that I provided at the last agenda meeting that were redacted actually had additional evidence to substantiate the claim. Ms. Fazio, at yes. the last agenda, you were advised that the exhibits that you were um, seeking to submit were not relevant to the jurisdiction of the commission. We're not going to go down that road again, so I would suggest that you continue on with your comments that are relevant to the jurisdiction of the commission or step away from the table. Well, that will be addressed in what's forthcoming, I assume, by Wednesday. Commissioners, this is not my first time at the rodeo. Let the games begin. Happy Father's Day. Buenas noches.